Hey everyone, I'm not Dan, but in this video I'm going to show you how to find the heat of reaction. It's... Welcome back. Now before we get going, make sure to grab yourself a calculator. Got it? Alright, let's go. Alright, so here we go. It's time to calculate enthalpy, or delta H. So as you can see, here is the equation that we are going to be using. Now before we actually start calculating anything, I want to remind you of the endothermic and exothermic graphs that we looked at in a previous video. Endothermic reactions have a positive delta H, and exothermic reactions have a negative delta H. So please keep that in mind as we do this calculation. All right, so it is a very simple four-step process. So I'm going to take you through this one step at a time. So here we go. Step number one, calculate the delta H of your reactants. So all we're going to do is just add them up. All right, so our first reactant here is CH4. So we come over to our chart and we can see that CH4 has a delta H of negative 74.9. So negative 74.9 plus 202. Well, that substance is not in the chart, which means that its heat of formation, or delta H, is zero. Okay, so remember, if it's not over here in the chart, then it is zero. Okay, so that's just a real easy calculation right there. So the answer is negative 74.9. Okay, so that's step number one. Step number two, calculate the delta H of the products. So we're going to do the same thing. All right, so here we go. CO2 is right here. That is negative 393.5. So negative 393.5 plus H2O, now pay attention that this is a gas, not a liquid, so we're going to use the negative 241.8, so negative 241.8, but there are two of them. The coefficients must be taken into account, so we're going to take that and multiply it by two. All right, so you multiply that out first, then you add in the negative 393.5, and what you get is negative 877.1. Okay, so step one is add up the reactants. Step two, add up the products. Step number three, use this equation and we take the products minus the reactants. So negative 877.1 minus negative 74.9 and if you remember your algebra skills, this is just like adding a positive, okay? So you add that together and we get negative 802.2. And our units for this, right, you can see right there, it's kilojoules. Kilojoules. Okay, so that is step three. We now need to identify whether this is endo or exothermic. This is a negative number, therefore it is an exothermic reaction. And step number four is to rewrite this equation with the energy. Since this is an exothermic reaction, we're going to put the energy as a product. So we're going to rewrite it. So we got CH4 plus 2O2 yields CO2 plus 2H2O plus our energy plus 802.2 kilojoules. And yes, I know this is a negative number, but the negative here tells us that it's exothermic. And then when we write the energy as a product, that also says that it's exothermic. So we don't need to put it as a negative amount of energy over here. Okay, so that's how you do this first example. Let's do it again with the second example. So remember, four steps. Step one, add up the reactants. Okay, so our reactant here, CH4, right there, negative 74.9, plus H2O gas, negative 241.8. So you're gonna add that together, and what you get is negative 316, 
Step two, add up your products, like so. All right, so we got 3H2. Well, H2 is actually not here in the chart, which means that it is zero plus CO, right there, negative 110.5, 110.5, Okay, well that's an easy calculation, that's negative 110.5. Okay, so that's step two. Step three, products minus reactants. So negative 110.5 minus a negative 316.7. Right, same thing as adding a positive. Okay, so we add that all up and what we get is a positive 206. 0.2 kilojoules. This is a positive number, which means that this is a or an endothermic reaction. So when now when we go to step four and write the balanced equation, since this is endothermic, we're going to put our energy as a reactant. So here we go. CH4 plus H2O plus our energy. 206.2 kilojoules yields 3H2 plus CO. All right, that's how it's done. It's actually very simple. Just make sure you're going through each step one at a time until you get to the final answer. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I will scroll down. Here are two more examples for you to try out. So same as we've done before, I'll tell you to pause, you work them out, start the video up again, and then you'll be able to check your answers. All right, so pause here in one, two, three, pause. All right, here are your answers. Check them, see how you did. If you have any further questions, I would love to hear from you. Thanks a lot. Well, thank you so much for watching. As always, if you have any further questions, uh, please be sure to comment below, or you can just send me an email to chemistrytalk at gmail.com. And if you haven't done so yet, please hit that subscribe button. All right, thank you guys so much. Remember, I'm not Dan, and neither are you. Check you later. Now I'm ready.